Welcome to the Camp Owners Podcast, a space for camp owners to talk about the unique aspects of camp ownership and get inspired by each other. We're going to sit down with camp industry experts, leaders, and fellow camp owners to hear how the camp dream transpired for them, learn from each other, and discuss some of the biggest issues in the private camp industry. Hi, my name is Howie Grossinger. I am the co-owner of Camp Robin Hood, a day camp in Toronto, Canada, and also a co-owner of Camp Walden, an overnight camp about three hours north of Toronto. Hello, listeners. I am Kelly Shuna, and I am the co-owner and director of Hidden Pines Ranch, which is a day camp located in Stillwater, Minnesota. If you're looking on how to find and describe to the Camp Owners Podcast, you can either find us online at gocamp.pro slash COP or by searching for us in your favorite podcast app. With us being a relatively new podcast, we would be extremely grateful if you would rate, review, and subscribe to those apps. It will help us to get the show out to other camp professionals and tell us a bit about why you love the show. Finally, if you're listening to this and think it would be useful for other camp owners or aspiring camp owners in your circle, please feel free to send them a note to listen. First and foremost, uh, we hope that you're all doing well on the home front and supporting everyone that is close to you during this health crisis. Our camp community is amazing and all of us at Go Camp Pro are here to support. Please continue to use these resources enhanced by the minute by camp professionals around the world. There is an ACA camp business resource page, which is a website and web page on the ACA with links related to federal and state resources, webinars, articles, and more. And then there's also the camps and COVID-19 Slack team that is free. Um, it has real-time conversation with other camp professionals who are invested in making camp awesome, despite the uncertainty that goes with this. Um, all of these are in our show notes on the episode. And among the other things um, on camp owners' minds right now um, during this camp, current landscape uh, related to summer camp and COVID-19 is what does this mean for staff and for staff training? If we have to pivot from how we've traditionally trained staff and how we can execute a staff training that's engaging, sets a tone for the culture of our staff from a new platform virtually, um, you know, what does that look like? So when we think about staff training at summer camp, um, I don't know about the rest of you, but for me, after staff and staff training comes Michael Brandwine. Um, <laughs> I, it's true, Michael. Um, so if you're anything like me, um, he was one of the first people that Howie and I thought about when we wanted to talk about pivoting um, to having to do some staff training differently this year. So we're thrilled to have Michael Brandwine on our podcast today um, to share his insight, knowledge, and enthusiasm with camp owners as we take this on um, and welcome this challenging opportunity to innovate. Exactly, Kelly. Uh, it's great to see you and, and bring this podcast to everyone. But before we welcome our guest, um, I want to uh, thank our sponsor. Our, th our sponsor is Camp Brain, uh, and a huge shout out to them. Uh, Camp Brain is a camp management software and serves over 1,300 camps. They've been doing this since 1994 with 45 plus dedicated staff to meet your every need. With core modules and camper, conference center, and fundraising, Camp Brain has all the features to meet your camp's needs. They are always innovating the software and releasing new features based on their deep knowledge of the camping industry. For instance, look for their new camp store module that was released this spring. It will be integrated with Square to provide an excellent point of sales experience, inventory management, as well as an online store. And during these very difficult times for all of, all of us in the camp profession, I would just like to acknowledge how supportive Camp Brain has been to its customers. Not only are they a well-desired um, vendor for many of us in the camp industry, but they're supporting us during this time with accommodations as we consider refunds, updates, and surveys based on um, the various camps that they use. So, uh, kudos to Rob and Shane and the entire Camp Brain team for doing their part to support us during this very difficult time. If you want to learn more about Camp Brain, please check them out at campbrain.com or call 866-485-8885. I'd now like to introduce our guest who really doesn't need an introduction, but uh, uh, we're happy to have Michael Brandwine with us. As many of our listeners will know, Michael does training every year for camp staff and leadership teams, um, not only in North America, but throughout the world. He has presented in every one of the 50 states and on six of the seven continents. 
Michael is the number one best-selling author in the field of camp training and supervision books. And once again, Michael's six books have been the number one bestsellers at this year's ACA National Conference and at the Tri-State Conference. Michael wrote and presented three TV programs on communicating with youth. These programs have received an Emmy. He is a former national board member of the American Camp Association, and he lives in Chicago with his wife, Donna, a sign language interpreter for the deaf, and they have two sons, Dave and Benjamin, who are both educators. Um, I just like to add that if there is ever a Mount Rushmore for camp influencers, uh, Michael <laughs> wait, Brandwine wait, wait. would be Let on Let me stop it. there. No. The, the, the guy pushing the broom, who's the custodian at the National Park, could possibly be Michael Brandwine. I, let me finish I, the Mount Rushmore thing. I, I, I would agree with that, Michael. But as it relates to camp specifically. Mount Rushmore. Gosh. Howie. Ca I'm a Canadian. I got to use Mount Rushmore occasionally. Oh, uh, wow. But I want to say, just on a personal note, uh, my very first staff training was back in, gosh, 1987. Michael was the keynote speaker at our staff training at Camp Robin Hood. Oh, and he's been a huge mentor to me personally and to many of us in the industry. So, Michael, it is great to have you. And as we do with all of our guests, you know, um, we just like to know a little bit, you know, how did it all start in the camp world for you? I know it goes way back to when you were a camper, but maybe you could share with our listeners a little bit about that. Well, camper for sure. Uh, my first counselor position, I was 13. I was a day camp counselor uh, because mom suggested that I, uh, she'd read in an article in a Chicago newspaper that they were looking for volunteers for a social service camp uh, for poor kids. And I was a magician at age 11 and 12. So I'm really in camp because of magic. I wanted to learn how to work with kids. The tricks you can practice in front of the mirror, you know, uh, and from the books, but how do you work with the kids? Because that was the only audience I could perform for. Um, and uh, so I said, well, I've been to camp. Maybe I'll volunteer to work at a camp. And uh, I did that summer. I was uh, North America's youngest and least qualified day camp counselor. And uh, then uh, I did it the following summer. So I guess when I was 14 or so or 15. And then I started getting jobs at camps that were owned by private individual camp folks and then agency camps. And I helped run a YMCA day camp here in the Chicago area um, uh, as a camp administrator. And uh, that was just the start of it. It was, uh, was really because of magic and because of mom. Uh, and her suggestion uh, that, um, and to put it in a sentence, which is good advice for staff, if you really want to be good at this, the best thing to do is to learn how to watch people who are good at it. Uh, how to watch is different than just watch. It's different than saying going to, uh, 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 you know, Kelly to your camp and watch your superstar counselors. Um, because some people look at superstars and they simply say, uh, Oh, and they sigh and they say, oh, I'll never, you know, I, I wish I was as good as, uh, as Kelly's best uh, counselor, uh, or oh, I wish I could, you know, do an all camp rally the way uh, Howie uh, or uh, Sari do it. I, that doesn't help people learn how to do better. You have to teach people how to observe and ask the question, what is this person doing that causes me to conclude that they are enthusiastic? Uh, what did they do that shows me that they're listening? Uh, what did they do to show me that they're well prepared? When you can identify those things, that's gold. And uh, that's what training's about, is to present to people those uh, specific skills. And uh, uh, that's what I've been doing for most of my adult life. Yes, you sure have. And um, I know that uh, it's during these times that um, we start thinking about connecting with our staff and how we remain connected. And I, and I think you know, our motivation uh, of, for having you on the show for this episode is, is largely about, you know, helping us navigate what can we still be doing with our staff uh, in terms of uh, providing some training uh, as, we, as we continue to be hopeful that we can deliver camp in some way, shape or form. But maybe before we get into some of those suggestions, you know, what, what has it been your experience during this difficult time about, you know, industry people that you know in terms of, you know, feelings and experiences as you support the camp industry? What, what, what has, you know, been your sort of insight to, to how the industry has been doing? Well, people, uh, their questions are different, of course. Uh, now, uh, I'm used to speaking to staffs live. Uh, and still have all of that on my calendar as those uh, some of them will be canceled uh, and those people are saying well can you consult with us about how to uh, uh, reach out to our staff uh, in a virtual way 
um, uh, and I'm getting questions about, you know, how can you help us communicate with kids and with families um, uh, if we don't run camp for the entire summer or if we're not able to run camp at all. So the, the questions have changed. Um, the answers uh, I don't think have changed, which is part of the secret to answering the questions. Um, we can use what we already know in order to adapt to this kind of uh, um, uh, uh, to this kind of uh, pathogenic crisis. Um, and uh, the way to uh, do it, as always, is to keep a mission in mind. Uh, uh, <laughs> Howie and Kelly, you, you know I'm an incessantly positive person. So yeah, this is a crisis and I can't control most of it. Um, but what I can do is uh, be positive and look at how wonderful it is uh, even with all of the tragic part, there's some wonderful things that are going on. I'll just, uh, can I just give you one example? Yes, please. Okay. Um, look at how camps are connecting to their families. Okay. So for years we've been saying, yes, it's great that in uh, fall or winter you have a camp reunion where the kids can come uh, in person perhaps, or there can be a family camp weekend. That's brilliant, okay? Uh, for them to come back, reconnect with camp, show the sibling who didn't come to camp, see how fun camp would be. You could come to camp with your older brother, sister, that kind of stuff. We've always done these kind of live events. Most camps have, I would say. Um, now they're trying to do stuff every day. And, you know, and then what are we gonna do this afternoon? Because we did something this morning. So that's a great lesson that is being learned right now, which is that these kinds of ongoing 12 month a year connections, this isn't just crisis response. This is just first, um, most importantly, mission directed and it's good business. So let's do the easy one first, good business. You know, the more connected and in contact you are with me, whether you're a restaurant, you know, advising me of specials or you know, a new thing you have going in, the, uh, you know, in December, uh, all of that is smart for business to do. And the more reasons you have to connect with me as a customer, that's very, very smart. Um, now go back to the most important thing, which is mission, which is we're in the people changing business. And obviously, I, I've been put on earth to annoy people with the word mission constantly. I mean, other people are here for different reasons and we all help in our own way. But I'm the guy who, who keeps whispering mission or yelling or shouting mission into your ear. Uh, our job is to change kids. So what do camp directors who are in the youth development business think about all the time? Well, they think about do the changes that occur in our kids last? And then there's people whose job it is, you know, they're put on earth to research and to try to provide us with data to see whether or not we can actually prove to people uh, outcomes. Uh, and uh, uh, can we actually prove that we have a long uh, lasting um, effect on kids because of camp? Every camp director, am I right? Have both of you heard stories from parents who say, my kid came home and emptied the dishwasher. What's going on? What do you put in the water? You know, whether it's day camp or resident camp, or my kid's rolling up his own socks, or my, my daughter set the table. Um, the question is, does that happen in October? Does that happen in November? So now you see why I get excited about this. One thing we can control is we can use this more frequent contact with parents, families, and campers, and we can help make the youth development difference that we are building at camp and make sure through reminders and practice, and you can make this a 12 month thing, which is yet another reason that by bringing camp into someone's home um, 12 months a year, uh, this is a terrific opportunity to build better people. Um, and uh, uh, when I say go into their home, I know what there's a big debate going on right now. If you go onto the, the websites and Go Camp Pro has been, you know, the leader in, in coordinating all of this. People are talking about, can we have a virtual camp? You know, can we do this for all day or three hours? I worked in children's television for CBS in Chicago for two years, part time while I was practicing law. It takes a lot of hours to put together programming for kids and a lot of professionals to be able to do that all power and all praise to you know those of you who are working to try to find some ways of doing that but I, i'm here to remind you how can we make that mission directed how can we make the contact that we have even if it's uh 15 minutes a week uh, uh i can i give you some examples i've given to clients just real fast Mm -hmm. That would be, yeah, that would okay. be great. All right. So for example, we have little kids drawing pictures uh, and hold up your pictures to the screen, right? You know, and so here's a picture of my dog and here's a picture of what I see outside my window. 
what I adv what I would advise you to do is to say yes, do that, and have uh, the younger kids who are drawing pictures draw pictures of. Can you draw a picture of a way in which you've helped your family this week? Mm -hmm. Can you yeah. draw a picture of what you did for your brothers or your sisters in order to help out and to make them feel less lonely? You know, or, or to let let them have fun. Wouldn't that be tremendous? Um, uh, uh, there are ways of um, uh, giving advice to older kids as well as younger ones, but now to give an example of older kids about what can you do. Uh, for example, here's a game that we'll teach to older campers, and now we want you to teach this to your younger siblings who may not even be watching. So why is that mission directed? Well, because when you teach people how to teach somebody else, you are growing people who have communication skills and patient skills and organizational skills. Um, so I know everyone's scrambling to find, here's nine new ways to play rock, paper, scissors. Your, you know, your friend Michael from Chicago is going <laughs> to tell you, um, take that another step. Say, here's something that you can teach to, uh, you know, to your grandma on the next video call. Here's something you can teach to your dad that I bet he doesn't know. Um, uh, and uh, that gives you the excuse to talk about who are your good teachers and why do you think they're nice? You know, you come back from the first day of school and you say, oh, my counselor's nice or my counselor's, I'm sorry, my teacher's nice or my teacher's mean. Why do you think that? And how do you get people to see that you really want them to have fun and stuff like that? Um, so uh, this doesn't have to be an hour production. It doesn't have to be half a day or all day. It can just be taking the things we're already doing and as we should always do, bring it back to What's the mission? How can we actually um, uh, help our kids learn great skills for life and great character qualities? And to me, the most exciting thing about all of this, no matter what happens, I mean, some people have already canceled camp. My heart goes out to you. Some of them have let people go who have worked with them for dozens of years. Mm. I, you know, we bleed for you how awful that is. Um, uh, some of you, you know, most are in a wait and see mode, but whatever happens, um, uh, let's remember that this kind of uh, constant communication is a, is, a, is a fabulous thing that will help us uh, accomplish our mission 12 months a year instead of just when camp is in session and not just for a reunion day in November or December. Yeah, you know, I think that we were, I know from our own experience, we were very upfront with our camp families about the content we would provide that is very parent-centric and what is kid-centric and how we were going to use the access we have to all of our families to be very uh, intentional about the stuff that's going to keep the kids motivated and uh, excited about uh, potentially coming to camp, but also, you know, giving direct updates. So we weren't using social channels for the deep, heavy stuff, of course, and leaving that for another forum where we can connect to parents. And, and when the time comes, depending on what camp looks like, you know, providing hopefully the kind of resources they need that continues what we feel to believe the relationship we have with our families, and that is giving them tools to, to be able to be effective at home, because it's going to be, you know, potentially a real struggle for parents to, um, you know, share the messages that may be forthcoming uh, about whatever the summer looks like. Kel Kelly, do you have some thoughts on that? I know you've been doing a lot of good stuff with your, your camp families on your, on your social stuff. Well, something that comes to mind was something that I talked with Ruby Compton about. So I have to give her credit because I loved what she had to say. And she had sent me a message and just thinking about, you know, kids at home and with their families and what summer will look like. And something she had said to me, which gave me so much peace and just, okay, that's the mission and the meaning of campus. She said, for places where camp can't happen or it can't look the same, maybe those people are needed in other places this summer. Maybe these kids are needed in their neighborhood to teach the games that we teach them at camp. So the things that have been role modeled for them, they can role model and teach the kids in their neighborhood or their siblings or even their parents. And maybe these staff are needed in places where kids maybe wouldn't get this exposure to the great things that happen at camp. So they're needed in other places or in the workplace. I mean, every workplace needs more camp, in my opinion. Um, the good things that happen at camp, like. We don't get a chance to bring camp to different stores or business places, but maybe this is our chance to spread the goodness of camp to other places. So that's just been something that I've been hanging on to for me that makes me feel like, you know what, if it, it will look different and no matter where these people will be, I get a lot of 
Huh, knowing that, you know, the good work that we do is, is not going to go to waste. It's going to be spread even more than it is from our camp. So, yeah, and you're so right. And I take the maybe out of it. It's not maybe it will spread. It'll spread to kids who are in the house who are looking over the camper's shoulder, but don't go to camp themselves. Um, it will spread in many different ways, uh, for sure. And uh, the trick is just to be sure that we just always ask, why am I doing this? Um, uh, if, if people say, well, I'm doing it in order to, you know, to, to help people deal with the fact that, that we're uncertain about whether we're going to have camp, then you do certain things. Um, if you're doing it for the purpose of uh, showing people the power that camp is as a, uh, a people changer, uh, then uh, you do, uh, you know, related things, but, but different. Uh, so, for example, how many camps right now are doing that camp songs, right? They have counselors from their own place, and they're doing the songs, and they're baby sharking from every corner of North America, right? Okay. Um, uh, but wouldn't it be awesome if while they were doing that, that this is just one more example, you know, you'll, you'll, have, to, you'll, you'll just have to cut the podcast. Oh no, we've unleashed Michael. He's got 20 hundred. Um, uh, let's just give you one more example. Wouldn't it be cool if while they were teaching the song, they said, now, you know that these are the motions that we do with the song at camp. And isn't it fun to remember that? And we hope we'll get to do that together, you know, in another month or so. Um, but if you could make up new motions that we've never used at camp, that's what's called being creative. Creative people say, is there another way to do it? Creative people ask the question, how could I surprise people? Instead of what they expect, I could do something different. That's what creative people do. And everyone can be creative. So that's the way you stop talking and you let kids, you know, in their own house, do the song again, make up motions, and maybe they can show, you know, if you have that kind of two-way video kind of situation, then they can zoom their motions. Or you rehearse it, you know, with your parents, and then you, you know, in a, a TikTok kind of way or something. Did you notice how the old guy, you know, yes. slipped in? Howie, were you impressed by that? Okay. <laughs> um, a TikTok, it's this, I don't know, it's this giant clock that you can look at on the internet. I don't know what it is. But, um, uh, uh, and then they can show it off in a subsequent broadcast. So, but see how it, just that tiny change, you don't have to change the whole thing that you have to do, but that's what I've been consulting with people about. How can we take the kinds of things we're doing now and show people that this power of camp uh, is, uh, 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 well, it, it, rephrase it, that camp is probably the very best way we have to uh, affect how human beings are and uh, change them and, and give them a uh, great character, even a more powerful a tool than school itself. All right, I'll right. be quiet now. <laughs> oh, you're not on this podcast to be quiet here, Michael. Um, but I will move on then to our next question that we had for you. So do you have any tips on how camps can engage their staff um, to be, remain ready to jump into action when the time comes? No. You have another question? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Well, that that's a big you question, said isn't howie it? howie said i'm on mount rushmore mount rushmore can't talk what do you want from me <laughs> <laughs> oh michael 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 i can well, tell you how to make a good omelet okay yeah tips what did you say you said tips uh to help staff get ready to uh yeah sure of course lots yeah of basically tips. engage them right now like how we yeah. just told me before we of started course. how he sent a video but that is the bat the battle i know for me and many yeah. camp owners how do i engage them from yeah. far away without knowing yeah. What their summers well, like. I don't know if this answer is going to be satisfying um, because I'm going to give you the deep answer. Okay. It's easy to say, I, here, I'll give you an easy answer. Yes, absolutely. Send a note right now when you've finished listening to the podcast, send an email to all of your uh, returning or possibly returning staff, veteran staff, the people have been there for a long time and say, uh, I want you to answer these two or three questions. Okay, and uh, we'd like you to share that in, in communications when we do our Zoom call in another week, or certainly, and I hope, uh, during our in-face, uh, possibly shortened, who knows what it'll be, orientation when we start camp in July or whatever it is. What should the questions be? Uh, question one, I would say is, out of all the things you learned in staff training when you were a new staff person, which of those things helped you best do your job? And why? Yeah. Okay, what was the most thing that you were so glad you didn't sleep through? Because nobody pays attention to anybody 100% of the time. 
Uh, I don't listen to myself 100% of the time. So out of the things that you got out of training, what were, what were the big things, okay? Because if I was new, that's what I would want to know. And frankly, if I was returning, that's what I'd want to know too. Ask him the question, what's something that surprised you that you thought was going to go a left but went right? You thought was going to go north but went south? What's something that took you by surprise that you wish somebody had taken you under their arm and said, look, you're going to think that on the first couple of days, uh, I'll give you an example, you, you have to be really tough with the kids. And, you know, I mean, be nice, but you got to show them, you know, don't mess around with me. Uh, th that's the wrong approach, of course, to developing trust. Uh, sadly, many new teachers are told that in the teacher's lounge by experiencing uh, teachers. So of course, that's terrible advice. Um, and that would be an example of if you sent the question to me, that might be something I would say. So this is a way for them to start sharing their expertise, okay? All right, so there, there's an example. I've got a hundred of those, all right? The, the deep thing to think about is um, whenever you plan training of any kind, Kelly, there's four steps and you always do the four steps if you want to have a superb training. What are the four steps? The first step is what do you want the staff to learn to help them accomplish the mission? And you can start with qualities. Okay, so the fact that you're communicating with people more on the internet before they come to an actual live training, I don't care about that. I mean, I'm going to care about it later. And if, if, please don't forget to ask, well, there were some virtual training tips we can do. We can talk about that as well. Of course, we should talk about that. Um, but I really don't care about that because what you're saying is, how do I prepare young Michael uh, to be a great counselor? Well, okay, what you do is you take out a piece of paper uh, uh, or you know, it, it type it on your computer. But I, I like paper and I'll tell you why. I would use file cards. I'm a big believer in file cards. So the very first book I wrote, Training Terrific Staff, um, uh, if I were good at this now, I would go, and here it is, Training Terrific Staff, I'm holding up, operators are standing by. In the very first book, what I said was, get a bunch of, oh, Howie, you got file cards. Good man. All right, okay. So you just take those file cards, and what you do is you write the qualities or the, or the things that you want staff to have, okay? So you want them to be patient, excellent. Okay, somebody, let's write that one down. We'll come back to that one. Uh, you want them to be uh, great listeners? Okay, great. Okay, all right, so we got that. Step two, now you go back to those file cards and you put other file cards underneath those file cards. And these are the actual things you see people say or do that you want them to, to practice. Okay, so let's go back to patient. I want a patient staff. There are certain things that patient people say, like uh, take your time. Don't rush. Go slow. You've got this. Let's break it into steps. This is going better. How does this feel now? Is this better than it was five minutes ago? All right. Okay. That means you're getting it down. All right. Let's go. Let's take a break. That's what patient people say. There's other things they say, like, doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry about this. It's okay. It's good enough. Okay. We'll come back. We'll polish it. Now, if you didn't grow up, and if you're not living now, getting ready for camp to start as a young staff person, if you're, uh, you know, uh, the people you're sheltering with are not particularly patient people, you don't hear that stuff in your house. You don't hear people say, take your time. You don't hear people say, don't rush. Uh, so I want staff to practice saying those things. And I want them to be saying it every hour at your camp. So when I'm in front of them, we actually practice that. Uh, so, you know, I have an activity that I do when I, when I train your staff where uh, I have them uh, tear shapes out of a piece of paper and teach somebody how to tear shapes out of a piece of paper. Uh, I have another one where we teach them how to make a paper airplane and the other person pretends I've never seen a paper airplane. Uh, but they have a script in front of them. They have, you know, in big type, five things that I want them to practice saying over and over again, deliberately overdoing it because you wouldn't use all of this, but it's like a baseball batter with nine bats, you know, swinging them all at the same time. So when you actually go up to bat, here's Michael, by the way, using a sports analogy, how inappropriate is that? Um, and then they come up with just one bat and it's easier to, to bat with. Um, uh, so you have them repeat these uh, phrases for two minutes while they're teaching somebody how to tie a shoelace or make an airplane or tear shapes out of a piece of paper. And that's, that's what goes on the second, uh, on this other groups of cards. So one of the under patient, you have a subgroup of file cards. Now, why am I saying file cards and not computer? Because file cards, I can move all over the floor very easily. And I don't have to worry about backing them up. And there's something tangible and physical about them that you can take a dining room table and you can move them around instantly. And it really is better to to, to try that. You can later record this digitally, of course you can. Uh, step three, 
uh, what have I said so far? I'm doing this from memory. Okay, so skill, uh, oh yeah, all right, so the qualities, then you break the skills down. Then the third thing that I would suggest you do is organize what they are. Now, now we're starting to get uh, important, especially important for virtual. You have to organize them. And by organized, I mean in skill groups. So the skill group uh, would be, uh, there's communication things, and there's group leadership things, and there's teaching things, uh, and there's handling uh, negative behavior of things. And start putting these in groups. And a lot of these skills that you want them to learn are going to be in multiple groups. You can even make duplicate cards, but who's got the time for that, okay? But just sort of generally organize it. There's some things, for example, that I would call first day skills, like how do you set up your group code? Uh, there's uh, certain things that, uh, um, uh, I mean, the most important work I do in my life is uh, growing great qualities in kids. It's using my laser beam technique. It's, it's uh, how do you use positive communication to help kids uh, learn uh, the behaviors that demonstrate great character traits. So, you know, so that on my floor, that, that's like a whole room in the house. That's, that's a whole lot of cards, okay? And don't be intimidated by this. And if you just have a quality you want staff to have and a few cards under it, you're done. Go have ice cream. You did great, okay? Now, the fourth thing that you have to do more, uh, uh, Kelly, than because it's virtual, um, is you now want to sort of rank these. And the way I would suggest you do it is not, oh, this is the most important thing, this is the second important reason. I would suggest three groups. First group is uh, fundamental, everybody's got to know this stuff. Uh, second would be more expert kind of thing and advanced things. Uh, things that uh, uh, the, the best staff people do that others do not. And the third category of ranking, uh, let me just do a little brand wine vocabulary here. Uh, you may be familiar with my concept of SD1 and SD2. I find it very helpful. I hope you do too. SD1 is staff development one. That's the training you do before the campers show up. That's SD1, staff development one. Staff development two is all the training you do uh, after the campers are there. So this is like in-session training. As we all know, that's where we fall down, you know, because, well, staff are busy and how do we do that? SD2 is the ongoing follow-up training that you continue to do throughout the summer. Okay, so what I would now do is go back to those cards and say, which one of these can I put with a different color dot on it that says they don't have to have this before the campers arrive? I mean, it would be great if you did, staff, but you don't have to have that. Uh, either because they're more advanced or because these are things that are best understood once you have a group of kids you're responsible for and once you've got, you know, your buddies out there at, uh, at the waterfront or at arts and crafts or whatever. Um, now, why did I say this last step is the real virtual step? It's because <laughs> you can't teach them everything in SD1 even when they're sitting in the chairs in front of you. For sure you can't do it virtually. And you know, let's, 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 let's be realistic here. The people who you're trying to, you know, reach out virtually, they're doing school virtually now. You know, heaven help them, okay? Uh, with teachers who aren't trained to do that, bless the teachers who are trying to figure out how to make lessons interesting. Um, you know, so the, probably the last thing they want to do is to sit and, you know, have more instruction. I mean, it being camp related and it being you is going to make it more interesting. But what we need to do is prioritize, uh, 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 do extra prioritizing, because uh, what we want to teach them uh, in a virtual environment is going to be different. Now, what people, so some of my camps that, that are working with me now, they're saying, so if we do virtual training, can, you know, can you help? What should the curriculum be? And some advice that I'm giving them, uh, I'm happy to share with all of you, of course. Uh, for example, I mentioned patients, so let's be consistent. And we'll go back to the patience example. So patience is something you can practice when you get off your computer now. So for example, if I only have 10 minutes with a staff person tomorrow, I can say, today is National Patience Day. Um, there are certain things that patient people say. Here are the ones. You can hold them up on cards. You can make it a little fancy. You can have a funny one. Uh, no, that's things that patient people don't say because humor is going to keep them engaged, of course. And then you say, so here's your assignment. See how many times you can say this to people around the house. And that's it. Yeah. And that's great because now you can actually do better training than I can um, uh, if I were directly in front of your staff because uh, I have to get them to turn to a learning partner and I got to get Howie to sit with me and practice making a paper airplane. But I'm a you know, staff person and I'm uh, now at, not at university or college and I'm sheltering at home and I've got younger kids there. 
what a tremendous laboratory. In fact, has anyone mentioned that to you, that you're training staff who have younger kids right there while they're being trained? Holy cow, talk about an opportunity. So I want you to teach a younger person in the house or mom or dad or somebody else or one of your friends on Zoom how to make a paper airplane. And these are three things that I want you to learn when you do it. So you do the patient stuff. And then another thing, you, can I give you one more example of that? So in the paper airplane one or the tearing shapes thing or the tying a shoelace thing, just say, you know, pretend you don't know how to do this and teach them how to do that. And then what you do is you say, uh, and break it into steps. There's three steps to tying a, a shoelace. There's four steps to making a paper airplane and uh, have them practice that. Have them practice identifying the number of steps, saying here's step one, great, on step one, all right, we got three steps to go. <laughs> I guarantee you, if, if you make that interesting, and you don't need more than five or I, I don't need more than five or 10 minutes with your staff online to teach them how to do that. I really don't, and you don't either. And then the thing you can do is have them practice. And there's actually people there that they can practice with, which is not true when they're in your dining hall. Yeah. Well, so, I think yeah. it's a gift of kind of some of that micro learning too that they're talking about is, you know, this is that blessing of we're not condensing. If we do have to do some virtual, we can chunks of learning, go practice, and then yeah. another chunk of learning, and then go practice. Yeah. Yeah, every decade they're gonna come up with a new word for it. Now it's micro learning. Um, uh, good teachers 50 years ago would say, well, you don't teach everything at once. You have to prioritize it in some way. One way to prioritize it is to figure out, well, are there certain threshold skills that would be good to have in place so that then you move to the next level of skills? So, you know, you've always done that. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't want people to freak out when they hear people talking about that. They've got, you know, good stuff and they're talking about, you know, great techniques there, but th this is, not something you have to invent from scratch. It's the way all of us have learned best in, in, in uh, well-programmed chunks. Exactly. I was wondering, Michael, if you could just share a couple thoughts about things we could be doing you know, with our leadership teams, our senior staff, those, those staff who are with us in a summer where, you know, in my situation, I'm, I'm annually coming up to my weekend retreat of getting our team together that's going to supervise staff and support yeah. them and, and, and do this work. Um, and any, any thoughts you've given to, you know, the, the new and returning supervisors, division leaders, et cetera, et cetera, when it comes to this period in time as we navigate what the summer might look like that may be different than or... It, I mean, I'm sure the chunking and, and all this good information, you know, could be delivered to the small group as well, I'm sure. But I was wondering if anything comes in terms of training supervisory staff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, and everything that we've said applies. So all of those four steps of what do you want supervisors and team leaders to do, break it into what you want to hear and see, bank it specific. Uh, organize them in the clumps of things like coaching staff and um, uh, motivating staff and uh, uh, being creative and programming. Those are different uh, groups of, of skills and then you prioritize them. So first of all, everything we've already said, that applies to your leadership team. People are now saying, uh, uh, well, see again, this is me being positive. Uh, what I have to do every year, if people call and they say, you know, Michael, could you, t uh, uh, can you train staff? Okay. All right. So if people, you know, that's, that's, people do that. Then people woke up and said, can you also teach the leadership team? Yes, absolutely. They're the heart of camp. They're the engine. And uh, that's something like, for example, at, 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 uh, at uh, Robin Hood and at Walden, uh, how are you and, and your folks? Uh, excuse me, Kelly, I don't know what you do in that area. I'm sure you do it too, but I'm familiar with, with how uh, uh, Howie and his wife, Sari, uh, uh, train their leadership team. Um, uh, and uh, uh, the idea here is you first have to make a commitment to get them all to some place. Because Howie, I don't want you to jump over the fact that you said, this is when we would be doing our retreat because that's a big step for some people. They say, well, how can we get them together? You know, uh, well, you do it. So now, you know, as best as you can, and maybe it's not everybody, and maybe you do it twice, some of these people here, but taking time with them uh, before the final preparation of camp goes in is what, is what distinguishes the finest camps, because those are the people who are gonna be running camp and coaching your staff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so now what's positive about the, the coronavirus? What's positive is it's forcing people to say, oh, I can't use that excuse anymore. I can't say that I can't get to these supervisors because they're teaching in school. No, they're not. <laughs> they're at home right now. 
Okay, well, some of them go on vacation just before camp starts to un, you know, unwind from school. They're not going anywhere, okay? So there's really no excuse to not arrange a Zoom call and talk to them about specific things that will help them be even better leaders. Now your next question is gonna be, well, like what kind of things? Great question. Um, how about sauce? Some of you are familiar from my super staff supervision book, my concept of sauce. It's spelled S-O-S-S, -S, signs of super staff. And uh, the chapter is called the, uh, the best boss knows the sauce. Um, uh, what, what does knowing the sauce mean? Knowing precisely what great staff do. These are the things we wanna model and coach them and evaluate and, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and train them to be able to do. Uh, so uh, Howie, what would I do if, uh, uh, if I were talking to leadership team tomorrow? I'd say at sauce time, everybody, okay? You've ever had plain pasta? Doesn't taste good. It's the sauce that makes it something that people want three helpings with, okay? For us at camp, it's this brand wine sauce stuff. It's the sign of super staff. I want you to think about the best staff you saw last summer, and I want you to come up, please, with 20 things or 10 things or 12 things that they did that other staff did not do that made you go, wow, this woman, you know, gosh, I hope she doesn't get that internship. I hate to be an evil person, but may you be unemployed for the rest of your life and have to work at camp. You are magnificent. You are a giant in the industry. You got to come back. Well, what makes you think those evil thoughts? What makes you uh, cause harm on that person in your mind um, uh, uh, and make them have to come back to camp next year? Why? What did they do? Well, because she's, she's always enthusiastic. She's always optimistic. She's always positive. Prove it. What did she do? Well, when we say, you know, tomorrow is spaghetti, she's the only one in the room who jumps up and gives a fist pump and says, yes, spaghetti. And some of the newer staff look at her like, you know, what's going on with her? And, you know, uh, it, those are the best people to work at camp. These people who are, uh, as I like to say, over the top. Uh, and then you give people examples of what over the top are. So development of your sauce list Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and Howie, you invented, uh, I'm going to give uh, Camp Robin Hood uh, the, the credit here. You were the first camp in North America to take my super staff six paths approach. And you were the first, but this is like 900 years ago. But what you did is you took each of the six paths, which are, if we can just help you, but these are the six paths that all leadership team workers walk every day. And when your leadership team knows what these six paths are, they know what to do they're walking around. Nobody told me. I became a staff supervisor and they gave me a clipboard and they took my kids away and just gave me staff. So what, what, Howie, what you did was you said, I'm going to assign, you know, a couple of leadership team members path one and a couple of them path two, and you have them teach those paths on the next Zoom call. And um, uh, not like it's a burden. Uh, path one is how to make uh, staff, uh, I'm sorry, how to make camp programming more creative. That's really fun. You'd have a lot of fun having a personal, you know, go into a chat room or just having a conversation with a, another member of the leadership team and coming up with all of these outstanding things we could do that will make camp fresh and exciting. And those are the kinds of things that we should be talking about now. Yeah, and I'm, I'm in the midst and, and, and Michael, uh, it continues to be a tradition for me um, that that book is the gift I give all new supervisory staff uh, when they come on board. Um, because it's, it's served as a, a really great um, introduction to the role that they, they take on. So uh, we were happy to get creative on how to use that content and it continues to be something we, we love to do. And, and if anyone uh, wants some insight on, on, on ways to do that, I'm always happy to, to share uh, if people are interested in, in seeing how it might be applicable um, to, their, to their setting. Uh, yeah. Kelly, you had a couple thoughts on sauce? Well, I just wanted to share with Michael how we have brought sauce to Hidden Pines Ranch. Is a couple years ago, after the first time I heard you talk about sauce, Michael, we talk about it in training. Um, I talk about it in two ways. The first way I talk about sauce is how I hire my staff, and that a sauce is just tomatoes is not a sauce. That's tomatoes. So you have to have a little garlic. You got to have a little basil. You got to have nice. all different parts of sauce. That's right. So I even talk about that in my interviews um, about we're looking for a depth and breadth in our staff, but. During training, we began one of the first days talking about SAS and signs of super staff of what we're looking for and bringing it up, bringing it up. And then one of the last days, we do a slideshow of pictures and we ask the staff to identify what's the sauce in this photo so they can see, even though campers aren't here, they see the sauce. And we make a whole list of saucy behaviors. 
And then actually every day we have a meeting because we're a day camp. We start to clap and we circle up at eight o'clock and we do quick announcements, anything people need to know. And then we do a sauce of the day. So I say right. to my leadership team person, okay, Rachel, what's the sauce of the day? And she describes what that sauce looks like. And then we all put our arms around each other and we go sauce, 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 <laughs> sauce, 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 sauce. And then we run into the middle. And then at the end of the day, we have little packets that we've taken from restaurants, but after we've only ordered to go. And we toss, <laughs> and we toss. <laughs> there was yep. this pause there, like you yes. were about to confess a felony. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. only when we've already patronized this business. But we'll toss them a sauce packet. And we'll be like, we saw patients today. We heard you say, take your time. So we toss them some sauce. Beautiful. So I, that's a huge part of our culture. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's been great. So thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. And what you're, what you're showing are ways of uh, reasons why we want to prepare to be able to do that. Because at the very beginning of the podcast, we were talking about my mom saying, you can't just hang around people who are good working with kids. You need to figure out what is it they're doing or saying that makes them so effective. So now we've come full circle. Mm -hmm. We'll pretend that we planned the podcast that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but what you want to do is involve leadership team now in identifying those kinds of things. And mm -hmm. you don't have to make, I mean, they're, they're in books. There's lists mm -hmm. of skills. Uh, the, mm -hmm. My skill of the day approach in that book are 25 of those, each one of which you, know, you, could, you can teach separately. But all of those can be done in, in Zoom calls. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and what you just do is you just take one skill at a time in order to be able to uh, uh, um, use this preparation time. Uh, and the fact that people are more available and use and and hungry for information from you and contact from you. So you put a song into it. Uh, you involve uh, you involve your staff, but you you know you focus on this is the skill of the day. This is the sauce of the day. I think in some respects your training this year could be better than it's ever been. And ironically, it's because there's a, a the challenge of a of a crisis, which. You know, that's that's called silver lining, folks, right? Yeah, you got it. You got Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Michael, I know that um, you're continually thinking of ways to de deliver all this great content and uh, training to people. And I know that you, you work with ACA Illinois to uh, in all kinds of uh, different projects as you do across North America. But I know there are a couple things coming up that you're providing oh, yes. for staff. And I thought that yes. we would give you an opportunity to just you know, share with everyone listening what's coming up uh, as far as uh, events where they can uh, see you and hear from you and, and get this great stuff. Um, uh, uh, thanks. Well, um, uh, I want to give compliments to the ACA Illinois uh, folks. They came up with a brilliant idea. I didn't think of it. They did. Um, uh, Kim Steiner, Colette Marquardt, uh, and others at Illinois ACA said, look, everyone's planning their staff training and you put it off and it's going to take weeks to do and you got to take 10. Um, wouldn't it be great if there was a way of forcing myself to sit down and actually scheduling an outstanding training to uh, uh, include the most uh, important elements of what makes a training outstanding um, uh, and uh, just have it scheduled and uh, uh, have all the component parts in an even better place. Um, so they said, uh, uh, originally scheduled as a live event. So they said, could you run a seminar like that for a day um, where we all sit and at the end of the day, we have our entire staff training plan. Uh, and I just thought that was brilliant. I've never done it before. So now we can't be in a group. Um, again, the silver lining to that is now people can attend without, you know, coming to Chicago. So uh, we've already got a, a big group, uh, the more the merrier, um, uh, and uh, we're offering it online, and it's in two parts. Um, uh, one part uh, on one day will, will be the, um, uh, the planning of it, and uh, I'll identify uh, the elements of what makes it an even you know, your best training ever. And this is how you, how you open it. And these are some specific activities you can do to make sure they're practicing and not just listening to lecture, et cetera. Uh, and then on the second day, it'll just, we'll just all be online together and people can just ask questions and they can do it wow. and work through it. And you've got a coach right there and I'll help you through it and I'll motivate you and, and uh, uh, I'll make you laugh and smile and tell you you're doing a great job. And, uh, uh, and that's optional. You can just attend the first part of it. Um, now I'm embarrassed to say that I, I've got things plugged in and I have lights yeah. and everything like that and I don't have the dates in front of me. Um, yeah. I will tell you, oh. it, Howie, do you have that in front of you? I, I do. And, okay. I, and I think that with the schedule of the uh, broadcast of, of this show, um, I'm hopeful that uh, everyone can take advantage of everything that's going on. I know something is happening uh, the middle of May. 
Yeah, um, is that May? Is May 12th and 13th. May 12th and 13th, yeah. So yep. May 12th and 13th. If you go to, uh, 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 as we used to say, www, if you go yep. to A-C-A-I-L, for Illinois, dot org, and you just go up to programs, um, uh, you'll see uh, uh, two pages. One is about the event I just described, uh, where we just want to support everyone coming together uh, to uh, help you uh, in an unusual year to do the very best training you can. And then we're doing, as we always do, the super, the super staff supervision thing, which is a couple weeks later. What's the date of that? Yeah, so May 26th and 27th uh, yeah, for right. um, you know teaching right. top techniques to lead camp staff to professional right. performance. Yeah. So there's another yeah. opportunity. Right, so Howie, when you said, what should we be doing with our leadership team? you guys are really, really busy. So what ACA Illinois said about 12 years ago was, let's have a place where you can send your leadership team, new and also for advanced things, people have done it before, and they can come, uh, 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 we have a place every year where they can come, where you can train them in a day. And so not, we're gonna do that online. And right. uh, uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me or to them, but thank you for allowing me to mention them. Yeah, people no. need more support now, and uh, uh, thanks to my uh, folks at the, uh, ACA Illinois for providing those opportunities to people, and I'm glad to support them in doing that. Yeah, our pleasure to to let people know. It's awesome, mm -hmm. Kelly. Yeah. So, Michael, one way, not one way, the way that we always end each podcast is we want to end with something that's inspiring us right now. Uh, that's especially, I think, important during this time. And so, what would be a you know, it's something, either a book, an article, a podcast, documentary, leadership culture, Ooh. just anything else that inspires us to be better. Can we do books? Yes, you have one. Okay, yes. wait, I'm, hang on just a second. Water Get first. <laughs> we want to be hydrated while we're talking All right. about Yeah, hydrated books. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, here. Ah, there you go. Um, isn't, this, isn't what the big boys do? They actually hold up the book? I'm very proud. <laughs> Um, now, do you see this cover in the uh, right side or backwards? It's good. Perfect. It's perfect. Oh, okay. Um, uh, uh, this is a book I, uh, I read and studied last year. It's called The Good Neighbor by Maxwell King. The Good Neighbor by Maxwell King. Maxwell King worked with the Fred Rogers Center in Pennsylvania. I uh, uh, good friends there, especially Dr. Dana Winters. Hello uh, to Dana, who do wonderful work in uh, child development. Um, and uh, this is a great biography that's inspiring about uh, what Fred, Fred Rogers um, uh, believed. And um, anyone who works in camp will be able to look at that and see, oh my goodness, this isn't just for little kids. Um, uh, it's not for little kids at all. Um, uh, and so that's a very inspiring book and I, I, I strongly recommend it. You'll feel good about it. And if you don't know who Mr. Rogers was, and a lot of young people don't, it's a great introduction to somebody who was a legend uh, and uh, uh, studied with some really serious people who knew a lot about you know, creating uh, good people. It's a fascinating book. Um, uh, and the second one is... Um, <laughs> Oh, the books everywhere. The Brandwine House is covered with books. Uh, the Splendid and the Vile. Just finished this uh, about a month ago by Eric Larson. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. I should go like that. Perfect. Okay, yeah. Um, this is about uh, Winston Churchill and Britain uh, during the uh, uh, first days of the World War. Um, uh, first year, I should say. Like, say, 19... Uh, the 40, 1941. Um, it's an inspiring story of how people said, uh, look, there's things we can't control. Uh, people are bombing our city. Um, uh, they're killing uh, uh, our neighbors, uh, 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 our loved ones, and uh, uh, we're not quitting. Um, uh, we know that you're doing this to scare the Bahuzis out of us. We know that you're doing this. As a matter of fact, uh, the Germans even designed certain kind of bombs that were louder for, for explosive purposes. It didn't make any difference. They just made them scarier sounding. Um, uh, and uh, it was just to demoralize people. And I just found, ironically, that reading about, I've read many, many biographies of Winston Churchill. But this particular one is very easy to read. I strongly recommend it. If you're not a history person or a biography person or a political person, if you read the book, you'll be inspired by the day-to-day -day lives of people who remind me, oh, say a little bit about my friends in the camp industry who are saying, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. We're not entirely controlled. We're being bombed by this, you know, this, this uh, pathogen. Um, and uh, uh, we're, not, we're not giving up. We're right. going to adapt. We're going to rebuild. So those are my two suggestions. Amazing. Thank you, Michael.
Awesome. What about you, Howie? What's inspiring you right now? Well, like most people, um, we're getting uh, our Netflix uh, fix uh, <laughs> on, a, on a regular basis. And, and, I, and I don't think this has been mentioned, Kelly, but my wife, Sari, and I just recently watched the Netflix uh, documentary, Crip Camp. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone's seen it. it Wait, is say the first part. What is Crip, it? Crip, Crip Camp. It oh, is, I read about this. Yeah, it's the story of the creation of the, the American Law, uh, the, the Americans with Disabilities Act, and how right. the movement to get that into law began at an overnight camp for campers with disabilities in upstate, in the Catskill area of New York. And um, as many of you know, you know our, our camp has uh, a reputation of inclusion and things of that kind. And, and uh, Sari does a lot of speaking on that. But boy, oh boy, was it a wonderfully done documentary, very powerful about uh, the camp and the influence of camp and how uh, the experience of these campers with severe disabilities in the 1950s and 60s found uh, a home and uh, acceptance in a camp that ultimately emerged in individuals, you know, leading the charge for the ADA. And uh, it's really amazing. It was, a, it was a great documentary. So if you haven't seen it, I do recommend it. It's on Netflix. Mm. All right. Uh, I have a book as well. I'm a big book reader. And this book that I just got done reading is called Unt Untamed by Glennon Doyle. And the basic premise is not to feel tamed by who you think you have to be because of your gender or where you grew up or anything like that. And it goes along with that Mr. Rogers quote, Michael, of there will never be anyone and there never has been anyone just like you. And that's why you're loved. So I loved this book and um, it was very inspiring for me as a mom, as a woman, as a business owner, as a human. So I love that book very much. So that's what's inspiring me, Howie. Amazing, Kelly. You always have such awesome stuff. Great, great stuff. Um, it's now time to just uh, let everyone know where people can get a hold of us. Uh, Michael, if people wanted to take you up on your offer to connect, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, I'll just wait at the bottom of my driveway. Okay, great. Yeah, um, we'll I'm, I'm really lonely. I'd love for you to drive by. If, <laughs> if that's not an option, uh, mail, M-A-I-L, at Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, Brandwine, B-R-A-N-D-W-E-I-N, dot com. So mail at michaelbrandwine.com. Great, thank you. Kelly, how about you? The easiest way, um, if you're not at the end of my driveway either, six feet away, is Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, at hiddenpinesranch.com. Amazing, amazing. And for those of you who'd like to connect with me, it's Howie at camprobinhood.ca uh, for the Great White North, Canada. Um, we just also wanted to remind everyone that uh, not to forget that you can find all of our show notes at gocamp.pro slash COP. You can find the resources that we mentioned in the episode and lots of good stuff uh, from our show and other Go Camp Pro podcasts out there as well. Michael, this has been an absolute uh, honor for us to have you share such great stuff um, and, to, and to let our listeners have so much great access to the things you're doing and the, and the ideas that you're putting for us. So we really appreciate you taking time to do this with us. Well, it a, it's a, a, was a pleasure to be invited, but I turn to thank you and boomerang it on the two of you. You're providing a great service to folks. You have so many great ideas and it would be wrong to just keep them in your head. Thank you for, uh, uh, for uh, putting the time, especially as busy as everyone is right now and uh, investing the time and in, in sharing with people uh, and offering them other resources. It's really, it's a great service to everyone. And, uh, I much appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. And to Thank Kelly, you. and to Kelly, I know that uh, we've connected, and uh, you know at, we're we're in a time where we have to lean on each other. And uh, please take the time to look at the people in your circle to uh, reach out to. Um, we all need uh, that support as we work through this, and we will get through this. So we hope everyone stays safe and remains healthy. And um, let's keep talking camp because it, it brings a smile to all of our faces. So thank you for listening. And we can't wait to bring you the next episode of the Camp Owners Podcast. Have a great day.